my dear students sometimes you have to draw the superlateral surface and the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere for different purpose sometimes you have to draw the artery supply sometimes you have to draw the functional areas but uh, it uh, has become very problematic for you to draw and label the superlateral surface and medial surface in a lucrative way today i will show you the easiest way to uh, draw the superlateral surface very nicely and also the medial surface very nicely at first let's draw the superlateral surface before drawing the superlateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere you have to just uh, make an outline with your pencil i am doing it with my marker so it has uh, become uh, very prominent but when you will do with your pencil uh, just draw a fade line with your pencil just the length of a uh, finger and then double it in the length again double length then the width okay clear after that you have to find out the midpoint of each arm of the rectangle and then you have to find the midpoint of the each half okay now it is time to draw the superlateral surface just start with the temporal pole the temporal pole will be situated at uh, this point here so here is our temporal pole very nice and this will be the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and this temporal pole will make a notch for the lodgement of the cerebellum and here will be the occipital pole after that it will curve like this go in front and come here and the frontal pole will be situated at this point half of the total arm and then unite with the lateral sulcus region okay i'll make the line prominent now now you have to draw some other sulci what are those you have to draw the central sulcus central sulcus is situated just behind the midpoint from frontal pole up to the occipital pole so it uh, will be the midpoint and just behind it it is the central sulcus it will go downwards forwards and lateral and do not uh, touch the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus in front of it there will be another sulcus that is the precentral sulcus behind it there will be another sulcus that is the postcentral sulcus in between the precentral sulcus and the central sulcus this area is termed as the precentral gyrus and in between the central sulcus and the postcentral sulcus this area is termed as the postcentral gyrus and in front of the central sulcus this area is the motor area and behind the central sulcus this area is the sensory area as it demarcates the functionally and structurally different two areas so the central sulcus is also known as the limiting sulcus now come here here just 5 cm in front of the occipital pole there will be a sulcus or upper end of a sulcus that is the paratoxipital sulcus this sulcus is not so prominent at the superlateral surface it will be seen better at the medial surface and here is the preoccipital notch this notch is also situated 5 cm in front of the occipital pole so this region is the occipital region actually we have to draw an imaginary line from the upper end of the paratoxipital sulcus up to the preoccipital notch and behind this imaginary line this area is the occipital lobe here this is the parietal lobe and the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus will extend up to the inferior lobule of the parietal lobe and how this inferior lobule occur the inferior lobule occur uh, with the appearance of the intraparietal sulcus 
above it it is the superior lobule of the parietal lobe and below it it is the inferior lobule of the parietal lobe below the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus there are two more sulci one is the superior temporal sulci and another is the inferior temporal sulci and all these sulci will uh, go up to the inferior parietal lobule and here the area in between the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and the superior temporal sulcus this area is termed as the superior temporal gyrus and the area in between the superior temporal sulcus and inferior temporal sulcus this area is termed as the middle temporal gyrus and below the inferior temporal gyrus this area is termed as the inferior temporal gyrus okay the area around the posterior end of the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus is termed as the this area it is termed as the supramarginal gyrus the area around the posterior end of the superior temporal sulcus is termed as the angular gyrus and the area around the inferior temporal sulcus is termed as the arcus temporo occipitalis now come to the occipital lobe here curved sulcus is situated the concavity of which faces towards the occipital pole and another sulcus that cut the occipital pole and come towards the concavity it is the calcarean sulcus and here this curved one is the lunate sulcus actually the calcarean sulcus is seen better in the medial surface and here in the frontal region there will be one superior frontal sulcus and one inferior frontal sulcus the area situated above the superior frontal sulcus is termed as the superior frontal gyrus the area situated in between the superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus is termed as the middle frontal gyrus and the area situated below the inferior frontal sulcus is termed as the inferior frontal gyrus and here there will be another two rami of the lateral sulcus one is the anterior rami and another one is the ascending rami so it is our superlateral surface or it is the superlateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere i think it will be easy to you now and you can draw the sulci and the gyrus anatomically and correctly and in a short period of time thank you very much thank you for watching